Lord, we thank you and praise you for being God all by yourself. Lord, we thank you for the countless to assemble together one more time, oh Lord. Lord, we ask you, oh Lord, oh Shah Papa the Isa, Akusha Allah Pusha, Satan Allah Pusha, Allah the Isa, Akusha Allah Pusha, Allah the Isa, 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 Allah the in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, anoint our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Anoint our hearts and our minds to apply it to our life. And Lord, help us to help someone else along the way to show them this more excellent way. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, do you have your way tonight, oh Lord? Don't let the enemy pluck up that's what you will be planning to hear tonight. Lord, in all our giving, knowledge is a principal thing, but Lord, in all our giving, Tonight, help us to get understanding. This is our prayer and our plea, and we seal it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So now we all went through. Let me put my glasses back on until I get happy. When I get happy, I can take them off. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, first, let me read what we're going to use for a key verse tonight Matthew 5 and 48. Be therefore perfect. Even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Amen. 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 Now, this whole foundation of faith was based on Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 through 3. Uh, and we, we revealed the foundation of our Christian faith deals with repentance from death works, faith toward God, doctrines of baptism, laying on our hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. You said Hebrews 4 and 6? No, uh, 6, 1 through 3 is the, 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 the overall scriptures. Scripture uh, is what I said, but the memory verse was Matthew 5 and 48. So, 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 when we talk about foundation of faith, you know, it's important to build a, a good foundation in a natural world. You're going to build a building or whatever, but for the believer, we have to have a good spiritual foundation. Man. We have to have a good spiritual foundations. And we studied those foundations in, in the weeks, in the different chapters. When you go back, you'll see those things that I just read. Those are the ones that we studied. But Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1, reads this way. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection. Perfection. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Unto perfection. So, repentance of dead works, faith toward God, baptisms, land our hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment, all these are the principles of the doctrine of Christ. But there's two things that when we look at believers that we find, we, we find two extremes. One is that they have a knowledge of the word of God, but they don't know how to apply it to their life. That's bad, isn't it? You have the knowledge of something, but you can't use it. And the other is that believers emphasize experience, but they ignore doctrine. Yeah, I've been running for the Lord for a long time. But do you really know the doctrine of Christ? And so we, we can't find us ourselves in any of those places. We have to go into perfection. We must, we have to not only understand those doctrines that we talked about, but we have to also experience them. We got to go through. And those of us in ministry have to understand and know our experiences, our misery, really becomes our ministry. It really becomes our ministry because what we've been through, a lot of times we'll find folks that come up behind us who are going through the same thing. And God gives us the exact things to say to them based on what we've been through. That's the experience. But also, he gives us his word, which is the doctrine that we can put together and help our brothers and our sisters along the way. So once we build our life on the doctrines through experience, we got, to, we got to not just stay here, we got to go on to perfection. And that's what we're going to get into tonight. We're going to get to going on to perfection. Now, let me ask you all, when I use the word perfection, what does it mean to you? Anybody? Um, to me, it means maturity. That's it right there. That's it right there. When we define the word perfection in the same context of Hebrews chapter 61, the word means complete, finished, and mature. 
So when we read, when we read the Bible, when we hear the word perfection, it really means maturity. But you know what? People get it wrong. They think when they read the word perfection, it means that the person is free from error. There's only one person that ever walked that earth that was free from error, that was Jesus. The rest of us, we got some problems, we got some issues. Yes. So perfect Christian now is one that has achieved spiritual maturity. Basically what that means, that your mind, your body, your spirit are under control of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Whoever you yield your members to, who give your members to, that who, that, that who, that's who you, that's your God. Amen. When we're out the world, you're not members to Hennessy and, and, and vodka and, and mm. craziness. And that who are, that's who we, who we worship. Amen. But Amen. when we come on the Lord's side, we yield our members to Amen. Him. Hallelujah. So even in that, they're too dangerous because uh, if, 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 if we emphasize spiritual foundation and we don't emphasize going on protection to, to perfection, one of the dangers is very dangerous. I mean, we can lay this spiritual foundation, but then not go on the spiritual journey. Now, how does that look? I'll tell you how that look. Folk that been in this, they get the same prayer line every year, year after year after year. Hmm. They know what the foundation is because they learned that, but they never use or practice what they learn for their lives. Amen. The other danger is to attempt to build a superstructure of perfection on the faulty foundation. In other words, I'm just faking the funk. Mm -hmm. That is not, not grounded and rooted in the truth, not grounded and rooted in God's word. I'm just trying to build up an altar of me. Yeah. Yes. We have to be careful of that. Amen. See, a foundation is not a complete building. It's not. Amen. A foundation is what we build on. Amen. What we build on. That's why the, the, the that's why we have to build on a solid foundation. And God is a solid foundation. It's, it's why Jesus tells Peter, on this rock, yes. I build the church. Amen. Now, rock, we understand that rocks can build, build big buildings on rocks. You know, New York City is famous for what? A lot of huge buildings. Yes. And the reason why they were able to build those huge buildings is the terrain they were built on has bedrock. It's not a sandy foundation. You try to build a big super buildings in a place that has a whole lot of sand, you go down to the beach and try to build an Empire State Building. You ain't gonna get halfway up, because it's gonna fall. In Luke chapter 14, verses 29 and 30, the Bible says, let's happen after he laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mind me, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. See, a lot of people start. It's, you know, starting is not hard. Starting is easy. Apostle tell you, in the military, we used to take a two mile run for record tests. A lot of people start, but not everybody finished. So we have to have a real foundation. And people start sometimes because they have a a partial foundation. Man. And sometimes a lot of that is that person and also is that leader. You, we, we have to love you enough to tell you the truth. Man. Sometimes we have to let a brother or sister know, you ain't ready. If that, if that means they leave and try to strike out their own and do their own thing, Man. so be it. But we have to love them enough to say, you're not ready. You know, if you put a, uh, uh, you're a great cook, man, you can mess up with them dogs or what you call them things with the strawberries and the bananas and the cookies. Yeah, that banana bit with strawberry, you throw that. But there's a point where if it's not complete, it won't have the same taste, right? If you don't do all the steps according to the way you're supposed to do it, something's gonna be missing. If you don't put any seasoning in the greens, they, they'll be green and they'll look good, but they won't taste good. If you don't put any seasoning on the meat, it'll look good, but it won't taste good. So this is the same thing with the Christian. We can look good, but we won't be good because we don't have any substance to us. We're not seasoned by the salt of the word. Yeah. And I'm going to add you as a leader, I don't want to put anybody out there that's going to bring home 
to the uh, body of Christ at home to themselves. Sometimes I think a lot of the pastors just start liking it a whole bunch of posts I got that preachers on them. But then when they go out there and then they fail, or they fall because you you didn't take the you didn't love them enough to be patient. That's right. With them, or teach them, or teach them. And that's so true because I've taught folks, you know, there's certain parts of the service somebody might call you to do. Yeah. If somebody calls you to do, let's just say a word of exhortation, that's generally five minutes. Don't get up there and preach a sermon. That's right. If they tell you to do words of exhortation, don't get up there and sing a song because Amen. nobody asks you to Amen. sing a song. Amen. Somebody asks you to sing a song, don't get up there and preach. Amen. Nobody asks you to preach. Amen. Don't say that, you know, it was just in my spirit to do it. I just had to do it. And I had your feet sticking on love Jesus. Because the Bible says the spirit is subject to the Bible. And, and, uh, and also, one of the, the fruit, it's not one of the fruit, it's part of the fruit of the spirit is called temperance. That's self-control. We have to be able to control ourselves. Amen. We do. Amen. So, again, we have to make sure we're, we're not just foundation alone because foundation is something you build on. But you know what? It might be something different. Where I live at, they pour the foundation and build the house. Hmm. Where we at right now, they built the foundation and built this this type of facility. Over there, behind us, a couple of blocks, they pour a whole lot of foundation and they build a hospital. Yeah. So the foundations might be set and ready to go, but what's built on the foundation is of importance because we can't build something that God, we should not, let me say, you can do what you want to do, we have free will. We should not build something and call ourselves spiritually mature Christians Amen. that God didn't tell us to build. Amen. We have to know our call of the Lord. God will allow you to know your call. Amen. We might not always know it, we might not always feel it, but I know how to evangelize. I do. I know what evangelism is all about. But that is not my primary calling. My primary calling, I do believe, is teaching. Uh, and then with the teaching, God has allowed me to do other things. He's given me other graces, administration, uh, all kinds of different things. However, Apostle and I, a brothers of the Lord, what he gave him to build on his foundation, he didn't give me. And what he gave me, he didn't give him. So I can't be jealous of what God gave him to Man. build on his foundation Man. because I got to worry about my foundation. Man. And a spiritually mature Christian won't be looking at what God's doing Amen. over there. Amen. Because when God is blessing you, I got to, I almost got to start getting happy and making Man. some noise. Man. What kind of noise? Noise of praise and worship. Man. Because if God is blessing you over there in your house, guess what? He in the neighborhood. Amen. So I need to get his attention. Amen. 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 Amen.
No, our job is to help them have a relationship Amen. with God. Amen. That's what, and then they complain about, well, I can't go out of town because they always call me and they'll, why? Why are they always calling you when they get into something? Have you not taught them that the Bible says, these signs follow them that believe? Amen. Amen. That they can cast out demons in Jesus' name, Amen. and they can pray for the sick, Amen. and they shall recover, even Amen. if the sick is you. Amen. Amen. So, 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 spiritual maturity. A lot of folks don't want to go into teaching that because it takes away what they perceive is their power over Amen. folks. Amen. So, what that really is, all right, now, you know, let me look at this now. What that really is is manipulation, which means yes. witchcraft. Yes. And we want to have power to go over yes. people so they have to come to us instead of going to Amen. God. That is witchcraft. I'm buying it in the name of Jesus. Yes. My name is William S. Donald III. Yes. I live in Columbus, Georgia. If you yes. don't like it, that's your problem. Yes. And we got some people that don't want to grow in the word. They want to continue to leave. See, I'm going to have to stand up. I'm going to have to stand up. <laughs> they don't want to sit there and study to show themselves the truth. They don't want to grow in the word of God. They don't want to grow. They don't want to study. They want to call the pastor up and call up those who are strong in the Lord instead of going for themselves after they've been taught. They want you to jump up in the world yes. and, and, and go down and get the deep, the arms and the, because they both. You can do it, pastor. You can do it. I love the way you preach. Yeah. I love it. You study. Yeah. Yeah. You study. Yeah. So we yeah. got to go to God the same way you got to go to God. God well, got to give it to us. Exactly. And so when I was in what's called, and they don't call it PLDC anymore, primary leadership course, they call it something else now. But I was in there. I had enough to get some first class word test was his name. We would ask questions and we had all the reference books, all the regulations on the desk. He said, don't ask me. Look it up. It's in the book. Yeah. And I, that was a great example for me because as I reflect back on that, why do I have to call you up in the middle of the night to ask you something when I can go in the book? Right. See, when Jesus was crucified, yeah. we find that the, 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 when he was crucified, we find that the, the, the earthquake and then the, the veil was torn in two. Yeah. Well, when that veil was torn in two, you no longer needed the high priest to run to. Amen. You could go to God for yourself. Amen. Right. But see, now we have folks setting themselves up as a high priest. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you going to go into the, uh, the Day of Atonement? Are you going to go into the, to the, to the, to the <laughs> Amen. Amen. And so, and so, Jesus said to his followers, he calls us to perfection. Yes. In Matthew 5 and 48, mm -hmm. be therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is heaven, which in heaven yes. is perfect. Yes. That's our, 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 our theme scripture for today. God is calling us into perfection. Amen. Even as God is mature spiritually, yes. we need to spiritually yes. be Amen. mature. Amen. Amen. In John 17 and 23, the Bible talks about how it reflects the presence of God. He says, I am them and thou in me, that they may be perfect in one. Ooh, so wow. when wow. he's in us, we can be spiritual. Amen. Let me tell you about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost gives us what we need. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost doesn't Amen. make us do. Amen. It gives us the ability to do. When the Bible talks about the anointing breaks the yoke, the yoke is the stuff that we can't do. So Amen. the anointing comes and breaks that away from us. And now we can do it through the Amen. help of the anointing of God. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 14 and 20, brethren, be not children in understanding. In understanding, be men. Amen. So a child is what? Just that, a child. child. A man is somebody who's supposed to be mature. Now let's say that I don't care how old you are, because we got some, some folk my age and ain't nothing with kids. Amen. So we're not talking about chronological Amen. age. Amen. Amen. We got some old food. Amen. But God is telling us to, 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 to be Amen. in our understanding now. Amen. In other words, in our mindset and the things that we relate to and the concepts that we look for, Amen. we have to be mature. Yes. We can't look at things like a child. Amen. You know, you know, when I was a child and I look at my grandkids, everything is possible. Yes. You know, all kinds of things because they don't understand the reality of life yet. Amen. But as we mature in age, we understand the realities Amen. of life. Amen. So in the spiritual realm, we have to understand the realities of life in the spirit. Amen. We have to understand that as a believer of Christ, Amen. we're in a war. Amen. Right. Man, we're the war. We're the war. And then, you know, the, when you talk about maturity, when you know, when you, even me as a leader, I'm learning even more that when you look at the people that 
God has put, has put out of your leadership, you just pray. The church calls you to just pray for them. Yep. Because they don't understand yet. And so I have to pray that God give them that understanding. And we don't, we don't, I mean, right now we talk about when we start this ministry, we don't want nobody depending on us. Right. We right. want depending on God. That's right. We want you to know who God is. Right. You know, it ain't about us, this thing's about it's God. about God. So yeah. you got to know Him for yourself. I mean, you just got to know Him. And I can't tell you how happy that makes me feel every time I hear y'all say that because we as humans can and will fail. Yeah. Amen. We can and we will fail. Amen. So if we set ourselves up as super saints and we fail, that's why people walk away and talk about you. Because, you know, you, you set yourself up as being on par with God. No, no, we're not. So being, we talk about a lot, and in, 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 we've talked about it in here in different contexts, how, uh, and you said before you look from Genesis to Revelation, we don't see witches and, and, and demons fighting each other, but we see people within the body of Christ yeah. fighting each other. You know, I have kids in school that fight each other all the time for stupid things. Why? Yeah. Because they're immature. Yes. And it's the same thing with immature saints. Yes. That's why you have all these divisions. Yeah. Paul says to the church of Corinthians, in 1 Corinthians, and his letter to the church at Corinth, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, mm. and there be no divisions among you, mm. but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Wow. See, divisions, divisions in the church are results of spiritual immaturity. Amen. Somebody got their feelings. Amen. Yeah. That's immature. You know, I was speaking with somebody, a minister today, and I was, uh, I was, I was uh, encouraging them because, again, remember when we talked earlier about how when we go back sometimes, we, the adversary, when we preach, the adversary want to, taught us out of what God told us and sometimes yeah. we feel we grow up. Well, the person said they wanted to make sure they wasn't offending anybody. I can understand that. We don't want to be offensive to people in ourselves. But when you preach and teach the word of God, you want to offend somebody. Yeah. Amen. Because the Bible says the sharpest what? Two edged sword. Yeah. So all that sharpness and you ain't cutting nobody? Come on. Are you using it correctly? All right. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying that we aim our weapon and try to come up with something just to come no, on. No, that's not what we do. No. We do like Paul told Timothy. We preach the word. Amen. In season, in season, in season, and out of season. Amen. If you just preach the word, if it cut, it cut. Amen. Sometimes in the midst of preaching, I'm cutting myself. Amen. Yeah. Amen. But that don't mean I have to stop preaching and get I'm all offended by me. No. Amen. You know, we, we, we have a good time in church, don't get me wrong, but we don't always want to go home feeling, ah, sometimes yeah. we, want to, we got to go home feeling broken yes. and contrite yes. right. because the word cut us. Yes. That's how we grow. Right. I'm not a gardener, but Amen. one thing I do know when I was, 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 was growing my tomatoes, you got some of these things, they call them sucker roots that grow. You make you think you're gonna have some tomatoes on that branch, but they're no tomatoes. Because it looks just like the one that the tomatoes grow on. So what do you gotta do? You gotta cut that out. Amen. You gotta prune that thing back Amen. if you want it to grow the right way. Amen. So God prunes us with his word. Yes, yes. Oh my God. <laughs> Go ahead. You know, sometimes I've got a scripture that says that uh, we should be able to come among the brothers and be able to confide in the brother about our faults and our imperfections and our wrong. Because if you tell the wrong person, oh, then they're going to take that and they're going to get in the pulpit. Yeah. And they're going to use that. Yeah. And if they don't get in the pulpit, they'll be on the hell Oh my God. Yeah. All of our social media with your face. Yeah. But even though they take that and, like I said, you know, preachers, you know, downgrade other preachers, you know what I'm saying? But even though God says see everything we do and we feel this all is true. we this are is also true. in this towards yeah. what you're doing. But as a leader, yes. right? This is what leaders do. If God shows and reveals me, let's just say I'm a pastor, he revealed me to me something about 
possible. It's not for me to preach to the congregation about heaven. It's for me to go to heaven. Amen. And him alone. Amen. And have a conversation with him. Amen. And if you don't, if, 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 if it gets to the point where you don't hear me, I might have to take another person. Amen. It gets so to the point where he doesn't want to hear, I might have to bring him to the church. Yeah. Amen. That's fine. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And then if he still don't want to hear me, we got to separate. Separate. That's good. That's awesome. But we don't see folks doing that. No. That's good. That's now, awesome. now, I'm not going to say folks aren't doing that because I know some who are doing it like that. That's good. That's a hot Yeah, that's good. That's awesome. But God, Jesus is an example of perfection. First Peter 2 and 21, for every, for even here unto the year of Paul, because Christ also suffered with us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So we have a template, if you will. Man. We have a pattern to follow. Man. But will we follow? Now, I tell you what, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't trying to suffer. I, 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 hey, I don't like pain. I think I'm allergic to it because it makes me sick. But I know there's times when I'm gonna have to go through yes. for the yeah. words of Christ. I can't Amen. fear suffering. Amen. I don't have to like it. Amen. I don't have to like it. Amen. I can be like Job. Though he slay me. Yes. Yet I trust that. Amen. And as we mature, Job had to be mature because yeah. he had all these people talking yin and yang, oh but he still had to stand his ground. Right. Right. Now he questioned, and then we go through things and we question and we have thoughts and we have this stuff. But at the end of the day, we have to stand our ground because yeah. we have what? A foundation. Yeah. But now we're, we're stepping up. <laughs> we're stepping up. Yeah. So the standard of perfection is who? Jesus is a standard of perfection. And God's word is a standard of perfection. Amen. Romans 3 and 20, therefore by the deeds of the Lord, there shall be no flesh be just. Wait a minute, let me start. I'm going to put Addison words there. Stop, stop, stop. Therefore by the deeds of the Lord, there shall no flesh be justified in his sight. For the law is the knowledge of sin. So what he's telling them in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Roman church, God, God, as we've seen already, there ain't no plan B. It's about God's word. Amen. But in Deuteronomy 18, verses 18 and 19, this is where he promised the Messiah. He says, I will raise them up a prophet among them, yeah. among their brethren, yeah. like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not, not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Translation, I'm sending somebody. Yeah. And he gonna have the words of life. Amen. And if you choose not to listen, I got a problem with you. Amen. Amen. So by Acts chapter 3, <coughs> Peter quoted those words as it applied to Jesus. In the Old Testament, it, it, there was a lot of sacrifices required by God for, for, for sin. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the tabernacle in the temple, boy, them, they, them days was always barbecue. Yes. Mm. Yes. But we know in the New Testament, it's no longer necessary. Hebrews 10, verse 1. For the Lord, having a shadow of good things to come, can never with those sacrifices which they offer year by year continually make comers unto their unto perfect. In other words, the law showed us what wrong looked like, but it couldn't help us to get past it. Amen. Because folks still, in the book of Judges, again the children of Israel did as they thought because they had no king. Amen. See, now we didn't need a king like Saul or David. We needed king Jesus. Amen. In 19 it says, I'm a bread. And it, shall come, and it came to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require. I said this right there. Uh, oh, excuse me. This is the first 14. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. So, what that means, and that's Hebrews uh, 10 and 14. By perfecting those that are sanctified, those that are the called out ones, that one offering was Jesus' substitutionary death on the cross. He died for our sins. So because he did that, now we have the ability yes. to go on. Amen. You had a question? 
So let me, let me just get the purpose of the Lord. Galatians 3, verses 22 to 24. But the scripture has concluded all under sin that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law. Shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore, the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified. <coughs> See, prior to Christ, man couldn't, man couldn't live holy. Couldn't. The Lord showed us the need for a Savior. Amen. So that led them, us, I say them because this is biblical days, but led us to Christ. Amen. It's through Jesus that we are confirmed. Yes. Confirmed means shaped. We're shaped in his example. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. There's different levels of perfection. We're going to go through right quick. Uh, in 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, Paul calls the believers saints, which means sanctified ones. That's what we say the saints of God, the sanctified ones. Yet the same letter, he corrects these saints because of sin. So he called them saints, but he corrects them. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Yes. See, they were believers and sanctified in Christ, but some of them was not living right. Does that sound for me? Amen. These believers received their initial perfection. They were forgiven of their sins through redemption from dead works. Their sins were forgiven, yes. And there was the initial perfection that they received when they was accepted, when they accepted Jesus as their Savior. But they hadn't gone on from it. They not continued to put off the old man. Romans 6 and 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, and therefore, henceforth, we should not serve sin. But if we haven't crucified our old man, what does that lead you to believe we can do? We'll still serve sin. Amen. Yes. So the initial perfection is, you know, we're confessing Christ, but we're on the first floor. Yes. We're still there. We haven't gotten, gotten that far up yet. Amen. Because Romans 6, 1, 6 and 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? In this Romans chapter 6, this is the scripture that we must read to people and, and teach people prior to becoming baptized because this encapsulates, the, it talks about we're walking in a newness life. And in the verse that we should also walk in the newness of life is in that fourth verse then. So that's the initial uh, perfection. But then there's progressive perfection. Initial perfection from sin at the time of salvation is the start mm. of a progressive life of sanctification. In other words, progression, 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 grown, 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 grown. Galatians 2 and 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. If, if Paul goes on in, in, in Philippians 3 and 12 to say, Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which I also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. In other words, Paul has said, I'm not there yet. Amen. But you know what I'm going to do? Okay. I'm still Amen. present. Amen. I'm still, I got to get there. And see, as Christians, we have to have that progressive uh, perfection. We have to understand, we have to admit to ourselves, we ain't there. No. But we can get there. Amen. But we ain't going to get there by sitting down and saying, do nothing. Amen. See, Paul was a bad man. It was Paul that had, had he, you remember, he's the one who, who, who found that new law. He said, hey, look, I would do good, but he was always present. Yeah. That's a mature thought. Amen. I'm trying to do the best way I can, but I want to smack the taste yeah. out of somebody's mouth. Yeah. We got to understand those emotions. Amen. 
Sometimes, and now maybe it's just me, and I know it ain't just me, but sometimes folks get out of my last nerve. I know Jesus said we're supposed to forgive him 70 times 7, but when they have the midst of getting out of my last nerve, I ain't. I Let's be true. I ain't trying to remember that scripture. I want to lay hands, but those are hands right now. You know. But as a maturing saint, as a maturing Christian, I can't lay those scriptures aside. Amen. This is what I really need to pick them up. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Good word. Good word. So, what is the process of, 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 of this perfection? With all these words appear, I ain't messing my mouth up. What's the process now of this perfection? Again, we've already, we've already found it out, didn't we? Yes. What do you start with? A good foundation. Amen. You have to have a good foundation. I don't care whatever your pursuit is. If your pursuit, and it doesn't even have to be a spiritual pursuit. It can be a natural pursuit. Amen. You have to start with a good foundation. Amen. How many of y'all believe by show of hands, practice makes perfect? Just show your hand. Y'all believe practice makes perfect? Would y'all find out if you feel better if I told you it don't? Practice does not make perfect. You know why? What if I practice it wrong? Perfect practice makes perfect. In other words, what I'm trying to say is I'm not trying to say that we have to be error free, but we have to do it right each time. Like, like push up improvement when I was this up improvement. This is some things in the army. You know, you have these tests that you have to take twice a year. And one of them is to take, you got to do as many push ups as you can do in two minutes. And they not just push it up, correct push ups. So when you're practicing to do the push-ups, you just can't be doing the jelly belly. You have to do them correct. What I used to do is I, when I was watching TV, when the commercial came on, I just get down and do 10. Yeah. 10 perfect push-ups. Because I'm gonna get with you in a second. What did that do for me? Every time the commercial came on, I did 10 perfect push-ups. If there was 10 commercials, what did I do? 100 perfect push-ups. Muscle memory kicks in. When it's time to take the test, my body always knows how to make a perfect push-up. I might not get to 100, but I'm going to get a whole lot, and they'll all be perfect. When we do it the right way, when we go through the right way, when we trust God the right way, when we praise God the right way, when we do things the way God is telling us to do, as we grow, we'll be able to keep pressing and keep going progressively to pro to. to, to to perfection. Why? Because we have a good foundation and we practice it the right way. And they sort of remind me when I was in the out Ralph and Bobby and martial arts and track and all that. But I sort of uh, look at it when I was wrestling uh, and went to state twice. I would, you know, we would train on a certain move over and over and over and over and over. And so you train on it so much that you get on the mat and all that. And so you bring that to the Word of God when you know, when we be up there preaching, we take the shanks of God, we look up there, there and God, you know, you got to remember Isaiah 54, 17, and the end of the coming of your trailer. You got to remember, you got to speak it. The way performance again is your proper, and every is your tongue that rides with the shadow of the day of my God. You got to use it. You got to use it. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, some people we talk about in the book of Matthew, they say, He has given us the key to the kingdom of heaven, whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound, and we shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So, guess what? When the end will come at you, Man, you got to use scripture. That's right. I mean, you got to say, say, I come by the blood of Jesus Christ. It is written in the word of God that no one, I mean, you're, I bind you by the blood of Jesus. Lord, you said it, you said in your word, Lord. Then he said, we can come bold before the throne of praise and we may obtain with the right of God. So we got to get bold. That's right. We got to get bold there. Isn't it? See. But you got to, but you, you, it's this. Yeah, it's just like if you got a problem and you don't never use it. Right. And then you try to use it, but then God takes the prayer language to a whole other level. When you just get it, when you get in the prayer language, uh, 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 you know, just say you start out 15 minutes a day, then you're going 30 minutes a day, then you find yourself going an hour a day, then you, man, it gets so good to you, and they think, you know, did two hours, don't even realize. That's right. You see, so as we're talking about going on to perfection, yeah. well, let me read the scripture, 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17. Let me ask a couple of uh, trick questions. <laughs> All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, that the man of God may be mature, thoroughly furnished unto good works. 
Will studying the word of God alone perfect you? No. Absolutely not. You're absolutely right. James 1, 21 through 25. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity, superfluity of knowingness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save their souls. But be ye doers of the word, mm. and not hearers only, yes. deceiving your own selves. Amen. For if, you, if any be a hearer of the word, right. and not a doer, right. he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Yes. For he beholdeth himself, and going his way, and straight forth forgetting the man of man he was. Right. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, Amen. this man shall be blessed in his deed. So we can't just read the word and hear the word. We got to do the word. Amen. We got to not be hearers only. Amen. We've got to do the word. Amen. I mean, I, I heard my doctor uh, and folks say, eat right, exercise, and blah, blah, blah. But all, all that stuff they told me, if I ain't going to do it, why should I be surprised when I'm not going to achieve what I could achieve Amen. by doing it? Save some money, and you have some money in your own age. You know, I'm spending everything I got. You know, we have to do God's word. See, we, we don't just read it and, 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 and look into it. We do it. This is how we continue. This is how we continue. Continuing, progressing. See, bring a, being a do of God's word, that's going to actually assure us of salvation. Amen. First John 2 and 5, but... Whoso will keep his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that are that blessing are in him. In other words, when we do God's word, <coughs> we become mature in him. Because no, no, you're good. Because the doing of God's word, it's like exercising. It's like exercising. Now, you know, back in the in the 80s, they used to have that physical fitness thing, Richard Simmons and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Ooh, one more, one more. Yeah, I didn't do one more. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, I was I had a gym membership. I used yeah. to drive by the gym every day. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. I had a membership I used to drive. So it didn't benefit me. I had it, but I didn't use it. We have the word, but we have to use the word. You know, there was a phrase back in the 80s, no pain, no gain, because they want you to know in order to get yourself in the shape that you wanted to be in, it was going to take something. Yes. You couldn't be afraid. You couldn't get to the pain and say, oh, man, that hurt. I'm stopped. And it's just like we're doing God's word. It's going to come a time when we're doing God's word that the adversary on the other side ain't going to want us to do God's word. Right? Right. So when we run into that wall, are we going to stop doing God's word? Come on now. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you have, too, you have a lot of people that are physically spoken and spiritually weak. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, so, and then what they do, they spend so much time uh, building the body, but not building the spirit man. Exactly. And so what they do, they do. And so when the physical strength give out and they don't have the strength in the spirit realm, and that's why a lot of people fall because they're dependent on their mental strength, their physical strength. And so when that give out, they ain't got no spiritual strength, then they fall. And so Absolutely. And these people that you're describing are still babes. They still have, they still are milk. Because if we were on the meat of God's word, we will understand that body exercise profits little. Come on, I ain't saying being a slob, but it profits us little. And it's not going to do nothing for us all. Amen. 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 We have to learn how to progress in God. Prayer results in perfection. You were talking about it earlier, about prayer language. Praying in your prayer language. Yeah. In the book of Colossians, fourth chapter, verse 12, Always laboring fervently for you in prayers, that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Amen. It's a labor in prayer. Let, 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 let's talk about that just a second. You got to pray when you don't feel like praying. Yeah. Don't tell me every time you get down there and pray. I just can't wait to pray. Sometimes I can't wait to go to sleep. That's the yeah. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. 
But you know what? You need to have a sacrifice. If, if you're not, if it don't cost you nothing, is it a sacrifice? I, I love me some bacon. Anybody love bacon other than me? I love this bacon. I love me some bacon with some eggs. Let's check out the chicken and let's check out the pig. The chicken was involved because she the hen laid the eggs. But that's all, that was all that she had to do is lay some eggs, right? But that pig had to give up something. That pig had to give something to himself. And that pig didn't get that back. But it tastes really good. Why do I say it like that? Because sometimes the beautiful things that we get are the hardest things it are to get. Because we have what we have to go through to get them. But we have to sacrifice. We have to sacrifice. Go ahead. And sometimes, you know, that's why you see uh, people at different levels in Christ. Uh, people label more than other people. That's right. And so they, they, the anointing of God comes with a price. That's right. It don't come easy. I'm glad so you said that. It don't come easy. So uh, you may spend three hours in your crowd and somebody that's been 10 minutes. And so when God send you a place to go in and minister his word, and it's not you that's had an effect on the people, it's the anointing, the anointing. in you that have an effect. It's because you took time to label so God can work through you that's right. Other people deliver. That's right. Um, uh, and I'm learning now even more. That's why I stopped going to a whole lot of places and preach because so much virtue, people take some, so much virtue can leave you. You don't put it back in you. And you do all that running and running and running and running and running. And you'll find out your ministry is not going to be as an effect. And that, and that is a trait of spiritual immaturity because we can't get to the point where we think we're doing it first of all. Amen. But the spiritually mature place, person will look like Jesus and what did Jesus do? Sometimes Jesus got away by himself and just jab. Yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah. So, yeah. so, 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 go ahead, go ahead, Sister Ellen. Um, Sister. I, I like what you said. That scripture, it says, by, in other words, you paraphrase it, by us laboring in prayer, it causes us to be perfect and complete in God. Yes. And that word perfect doesn't mean the way the world describes perfect. That's right. But that means it's right here. It's in line, in alignment with God. So being before him causes us to be perfect and complete. Whole wanting nothing. And I thank God and that's and that's why we need to always be in conversation with God. That's all prayer is. And then after you get finished talking Wait for him to talk. Yep. Wait to see what yep. he has to say. Yep. Sometimes sitting in the stillness and in quiet gives us the yes. answer that we need. Yes. But it causes us to be complete and perfect. Check this Amen. out. Check this out. This is Don. This ain't the scripture. Being in the presence of God leaves a residue. Yes. Amen. Come on, man. It a residue. Yes. And a residue of glory. That is what we need as we start each day. Yeah. <clears throat> Surely, goodness and mercy, Father. Yeah. Right? That's the twin days up. But you know what else he said in twin days up? My cup runneth yeah. over. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's work with that for a second. So my cup runneth over. That means there's, there's too much in the cup yeah. to be contained in the cup. Yeah. Yeah. So some yeah. have to yeah. go out of yeah. the cup. Amen. But but the good part about it is it was also caught up in the sauce. Amen. So it wasn't lost. Amen. So so once I'm finished with my cup, uh -huh. I'm not lost because I have some residue Amen. left over in the sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus. So 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 along with along with prayer comes right. consecration. Yeah. 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 And I'm not talking about consecration as the service of consecration to the Episcopacy. I'm talking about, well, let's see what Paul had to say in Romans 1, 12, chapter 1 and 2. Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I beseech you, therefore, Amen. brethren, Amen. by the mercies of God, Amen. that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your what? Reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. We want to be 
want to know God's perfect will, but we have to live a consecrated life in order to get there. Consecration does be set apart. So we can't be transformed. We can't come from or shaped by this world. We have to be transformed. We have to be changed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. We can go back to that doctrine of repentance. Repentance means, metaneo means to have a change of mindset. Amen. So this is also telling us we have to live a repentant lifestyle Amen. set apart from purpose, Amen. from the world. Amen. We have to be consecrated. Yes, sir. But here's the thing. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present yourself. He didn't say I'm going to ask God to present you for you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said that you will do it. Yes, you. Pastor can't make you do it. Amen. Mama, daddy can't make you Amen. do it. But yes. we got to do it. Yes, we. Hallelujah. We have to live a consecrated life. Be in the world, but not other. I know I got to go to the piggy wiggle. <laughs> Another piggy wiggle. Down home, yes. down the street, piggy yes. wiggle. <laughs> we got some folks so, 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 so. So I can't go in there. They, I can't go in that restaurant. They have a bar and they serve alcohol. Well, how can you go in the bigger with me? The Walmart, the Publix, the Win Dixie, the convenience store. Amen. Just because it's in there don't mean I have to look. God ain't gonna stop nobody from making alcohol just so we can say say. God ain't gonna make women stop wearing tight dresses that are long shirts showing themselves or men showing Amen. themselves. Hallelujah! Amen. Just so we can say say. We have to do it. And as we mature in Christ, we have no more excuse. Oh, I, I could have been. If she wouldn't have worn that skirt, I wouldn't have pushed up on her. If she wore nothing. If you, if you yield your members to God, you ain't got to push up on her. Oh, I don't want to go to church because no tofu. Those church folk. You know what? McDonald's can mess up your order, but you're still going to get a big man. I know you don't like all those folk on your job, and I know all those folk on your job don't like you, but you there. Go ahead. You know what I'm saying? But you there. And you waiting for that. If you get paid every two weeks, you want that two-week reward. Yeah. You don't go late. You don't stop going because you got a hang unless you got that kind of, got that kind of sickness. You, just because you got a hang now. Church is the only place where folks make excuses. Amen. Excuse ain't nothing but a dressed up lie. Amen. And when you're spiritually mature, you can discern the difference. Yes. Amen. I'm not judging you. I'm just telling you like a T.I. Tiz. Go ahead. You know, I thank God for what you just said. Let's, let's, get, let's get real, real, real down to the nitty-gritty. If you got the Holy Ghost, you are without excuse. That's right. Because Can you say that so they can hear you in the cheap seats? Yeah. If you have the Holy Ghost, what you say? You are without excuse. Right? Because He's always talking. Yeah. And it's up yeah. to us yeah. to put ourselves in a position and in a posture to hear Him. Yeah. And then, and a lot of times, the reason why we're not kept. Is because we ain't in a position yep. to hear him. That's but right. the old school saints used to say that he will keep you if you want to be. So here. what you're saying is we have a role in this. That's right. That's right. And see, you know, I know this is God because I know she ain't got the book, so she ain't read my notes. One of the purposes of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is to assist the perfection process in our lives. Yeah. As we learn about God's ministry gifts in the church. Yes. How about Ephesians chapter 4, 12 and 13? The perfection of the saints. You know, he gave some, what, apostles, uh -huh. prophets, uh -huh. evangelists, uh -huh. teachers, pastors, for the perfection of the saints. It doesn't mean to make the saints perfect, error free. It means so that we can mature. Somebody got to teach us something. Amen. For the work of the ministry. Amen. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God Amen. unto a, a what? A perfect man unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. In other words, however common space, in other words, God gave us these people that he anointed to get up and through the foolishness of preaching and teaching to help us learn how to live holy, to help us learn how to live saved, to help us learn how to have a good foundation and build on it. Come on now. 
so we can press toward that mark. Oh, yes, Lord. And then he said, then this is the part that I like. He says, till we come in, till we all come into the unity of faith. We ain't all in the unity of faith. There's too many people got their own this and their own that. But you know what? The word of God is of no personal private interpretation. He said what he meant, and he meant what he said. Whether I cared about it or not, whether I had an opinion about it, it doesn't matter because the Bible says his word is forever settled in heaven. Amen. Woo, look at Jesus. See, God uses his leaders, and we have to learn to submit. I ain't submitting to nobody, okay? Every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. You're going to submit. Now you're going to either go willingly or not. Yeah. I would advise you to do it willingly. <laughs> in 1 Thessalonians 3 and 10, night and day pray and exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith. That's that, that Paul or something else. He was praying for his folks. That's what leaders do. Leaders fast when, 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 when the church, they had old time you know, eating, but leaders are fasting. Amen. Whom we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that he may present every man perfect in Christ. That's First Colossians uh, 1 and 28. And laboring fervently for you in prayers that he may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. That's Colossians 4 and 12. This also we wish even your perfection. 2 Corinthians 12, excuse me, 13 and 9. And Paul is writing to these different churches and, 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 and he wants them, when he's talking about their perfection, again, he yes. wants them to be mature saints. Yes. It is the goal, it should be. The goal of every leader that their people that God allows them charge over to become mature Christians. And it's, it should never be about how many people we bring in. It Amen. should be how many people that we teach Amen. and equip to send out. Amen. Amen. That's why folk talk about, well, you hear what's going on in Hamas, you hear what's going on. I look, I ain't listening to all that. I know, I read the book. We won. What, what the problem is? Amen. Well, that means Jesus soon to come. Hey. So, so I'm, I'm going to watch the news and the TV and see what, <laughs> see what, you know, what what's that do with the ball. Uh, ball uh, well, I can't think of that man's name. Oh. The news cat, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I got to think about what he doing. No, I ain't got, I ain't got time for that. I got to go out and tell folk that there is a more excellent way. Come on, I gotta be, I gotta be like Noah. Repent, repent. Yes. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. Get in the boat. That's what we gotta be doing. Right. We ain't got it. Even when it start raining, we ain't trying to do no forecast. Okay, it's raining. How many more people I get in this boat before we close this boat up? Okay. Amen. That's what we gotta be. Yes. Yes. Y'all got, got, got me messed up in <laughs> I can't even see. Usually I'm sitting down. But yeah. <laughs> okay, again, we know no, no one suffer, likes to suffer. We know that. But suffering is part of it. Suffering is part of it. But the God of all grace who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after he has suffered a while, make you perfect. Establish, not not established. Establish, strengthen and settle. Mm -hmm. First Peter five and ten. After you've suffered, Amen. after you've gone through, Amen. after the midnight cry, Amen. after the, Amen. the the tears rolling down your face, Amen. after they done talked about you, the more you can talk about you, the more you pray, <laughs> the stronger you get. After after, that's what you call an after effect. Oh my God, there's a whole lot of stuff that happens after you get power. I'm supposed yeah. to be teaching. I feel like preaching this morning. Say something. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing because yes. the last three or four years, what God did for me and my wife, He delivered us from people. Thank you, Jesus. So, the last three or four years, people had seen us in the city. And so, they've been wondering where we've been. We've been right here. And so, by Him delivering us from people that allow us to get ourselves back. Right where we really need to be with God. Because sometimes you, you minister, you minister, you minister, you minister. People become so comfortable with you. There you go. There you go. And then on top of that, we had God, you know, it's about soul saving. We, we had to get back to that. That's because right now what we're hearing, 
prosperity, car, the land, the house, the money. This is all people are uh, uh, getting promoted to right. job. This is all we're hearing now. That's and right. so you hear very little about uh, soul saving. And what it is, a lot of preachers are afraid to preach on sin because they're afraid they're going to lose members. It, it, it depends on who in there. If somebody that pay high tide, they're going they're not gonna preach the truth, but they they gonna hold back on that Absolutely. word to keep from losing that number. And so, but you can't be afraid. You got to stand on God. Hear what I'm learning too about this. I'm learning this even more that when you standing on real truth, the real truth of God. Now all these people talking about they saved and sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. They won't forgive nobody. Come on, they won't, won't Come on. admit they wrong. Come on now. Because they, they, you know, someone said they so heavenly minded, they know it's the good, but but they so holy go feel. And I, and even when I told them like this, it's crazy to me, even in this city, all these preachers in the city of Columbus, all them claiming they got they say they say the five got the holy ghost. Can't get along. Mm -hmm. uh, can't worship one another, but y'all all got the holy ghost. You know what? I ain't judging them. I'm just saying, but, but that, this, that, that ain't how the Holy Ghost works. I'm just saying. And see, that, that ain't even Casper's friendly ghost, because okay. at least Casper's friendly. Man. And so we see a lot of this right now. And so God ain't pleased with this. And so, and I told God, you build this, I'm really going to build this. And that's the right way to go. God going to build this. Remember, he says, and, then, and when we look over at Revelation, Revelation's tell you, you're going to say, depart. Depart. I knew you're not. Amen. He said your work was well of what? Of a nigga. Yeah, yeah. You had some works. What are you going to say depart? Yeah. And so we have to have, we have to suffer. Amen. Yes. Here's a part that we have to understand too that goes with perfection and maturity. Self control. Amen. 2 Corinthians 7 and 1 cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness. In the fear of God. See, one of the most things to control is our tongues. You know, I don't often quote this <laughs> great, uh, these great. <laughs> when I was growing up, you know, there was a group by the name of Houdini. Yeah. And they talked about the big mouth. They said, they, they, <laughs> they called your tongue everlasting. Yeah. You ain't satisfied unless something's happening. Oh, you got a big mouth. And we still got folks just like that. Yeah. You know, what they were that military phrase, loose lips sink ships. Yeah. We gotta be careful what yeah. comes out. Yeah. If any man offended a word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. In other words, the tongue is an unruly member. Yeah. We gotta get that puppy under control. And if you can't get that puppy under control, you know what we need to do? Shut up. Sometimes shut up. Thank God for shutting my grace. Now, I'm going to tell you, I thank God for sure my way. But my mouth gives me in trouble. And sometimes I want to, I just want to just, yeah, I want to be. You know what's wrong with the body of Christ? We give too many pieces of our mind. Yes, and when you give out too many pieces, you know, left all the pieces going. Now your mind is, stop giving out a piece of your mind. Amen. Give, Amen. Give, give them a piece of prayer. Amen. So we, we, we got to get to the point where we're inspiring the spiritual correction too. Amen. You know, in order to be mature. Because as we mature, when you can't take no correction, that's something wrong with you. I don't care what level you are. We got to be able to take some correction. Because we don't know it all. Amen. Brother, if a man be overtaken a fall, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Galatians 6 and 1. I use for a text. <laughs> uh, but we have to uh, we have to make sure that we restore folks. Considering ourselves means that it could have been me. Amen. So I ain't got time to put the mouth on you because you messed up. I ain't happy you messed up, and I know you ain't happy you messed up. But we got to get past this so we can grow. Hey, look, when I was a kid, I, I don't even think I was a teenager yet. My grandmama told me stop going over that fence because we had those wrought iron fences with the. With the little uh, wow. points. Wow. Wow. So she said, You better, boy, you better stop jumping over that fence. But did I miss it? No. So you know what? I had my school pants on and I crossed over the fence one time too many and I came down and that thing went up into my leg. Went to the hospital, got stitches, came home, and she wore me out with stitches. Why? Because she told me not to do it. And I look back, 
All I had to do was obey. Okay, but because I did it and because she wore me out, did that stop me from ever moving again? No. After I healed, you know what I ended up doing something else? I ended up playing football in the hallway. I got a pen stuck in my head and they had to give me stitches. That was stupid, but I was a child. So when children do things like that, you can understand because what? They're children. But now here I am, a whole grown man. I don't need to be jumping over the fence like that because I know better. Amen. When you know better, what are you supposed to do? Yeah. You're supposed to do better. And what helps us know better? The Word of God. So spiritual maturity does not mean, again, <laughs> this is a hurt somebody feels. It doesn't even mean advancing in God's favor, does it? Amen. Does that mean the work of salvation is incomplete, does it? Amen. It does not gain you access to heaven because you got became spiritual, ma Amen. spiritually mature. Amen. Through the death of Jesus Christ, it was through Christ that we're justified before God. Not anything that we've done. Amen. It's through Him we're saved through faith. Amen. It's through Him we have the promise of heaven. Amen. But what perfection? Perfection doesn't come by maintaining a set of standards. You know, we got the Bible. You do what the Bible say. No, yeah, no. we don't do what the Bible say. <laughs> It's possible for a person to maintain a standard that gives an outward spiritual appearance, yet unspiritual may be on the inside and even unsaved. You know, we call that a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. Amen. Spiritual maturity does not depend on how you feel emotionally. Amen. Let me stop right there. You can praise God through emotion. Amen. Because the only qualification to praise God is to have breath. Let everything that have breath praise, praise God. God. But the true worshipers worship in what? Spirit Amen. and truth. Yep. Spiritual thing Amen. and truth. Sometimes the truth is I messed up. Yep. Sometimes the truth is I don't feel like it. Sometimes the truth is I'm tired. I want to go to bed. But I need to worship them in spirit and in truth. I don't need to be faking the fuck that God knows. I feel like, I feel like going up. No, I don't. I feel like sitting down. I don't feel like going on, God. You know, if I can have an honest conversation with God like that, this is how I'm going to become more mature. Because there has to be a why I feel like that. Amen. And so when I have that honest convocation, convocation, conversation with God on why, I, on why I feel like that, he can help me get past why I feel like that. And what happens? I grow. We grow. See, 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 it does not come automatically through years of being a Christian. I've been in the way for 50 years. Yep, you, lie. you didn't lie. You've been in the way. Somebody else couldn't go down to Jesus because you've been in the way. Oh, or by our service. I've been on the issue board for 30 years. So what? Yeah. I've been in the choir. You've been singing a lot for 30 years. <laughs> spiritual maturity comes through an increase in application of spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge. This increase comes from studying God's word. Amen. The study results in understanding. And all I get, knowledge is a principal thing, so we seek knowledge. But in all I'm getting, we need to get understanding. Amen. And as we get in this word, we understand the process for perfection or maturity. And we understand how to personally apply it to our lives. Amen. All right. Woo. In <laughs> Oh, I feel good. Oh, I tell you what. Woo! We have to come to the conclusion of this study of the foundation of faith because this has been the last uh, lesson. I hope that, and I know I enjoyed it. I hope you all yeah, enjoyed yeah, it. Man, I man. got some, some, something out of it. But even though we're coming to the conclusion of this particular study, you know what? The course may be complete, but we haven't completed the course. Amen. Why? Because Hebrews. 6 and 1 says, go on Amen. to perfection. Amen. Amen. So, I wish Amen. and I pray Amen. for each and every one of us yes. that we may be perfect in all that we say and all that we do and that we always live in Christ. Let's give our hands up. Amen. Uh, thank God for Brother uh, William. He don't mind me calling him Brother.